This video is going to provide an overview of hypertensive emergencies, definition, and treatment. The definition of a hypertensive crisis is a systolic blood pressure greater than 180 millimeters of mercury and or a diastolic blood pressure greater than 120 millimeters of mercury. Hypertensive crisis is then further broken down into either a hypertensive urgency or hypertensive emergency. Further categorizing this enables us as providers to determine what type of level of care a patient requires as well as the type of treatment a patient requires. Those patients with a hypertensive emergency have new or progressive or worsening end organ damage such as acute coronary syndrome or acute kidney injury. These patients require admittance to an intensive care unit and parenteral therapy to lower their blood pressure. While as patients with an hypertensive urgency do not have new, worsening, or progressive end organ damage, and those patients can be managed with oral therapy. And this includes reinitiation of medications, and this is because one of the more common causes of a hypertensive crisis is non-compliance with medication, or patients can have their medications further titrated or new medications added to achieve blood pressure goal. When encountering a patient presenting with a hypertensive emergency, it is important for us to identify the blood pressure goal early on in the patient's management. The importance of doing this is to prevent further progression of the end organ damage and also to prevent unwarranted consequences with too rapid correction of blood pressure. In patients presenting with a compelling indication, which includes severe preeclampsia, eclampsia, or a pheochromocytoma crisis, the systolic blood pressure should be reduced to less than 140 millimeters of mercury in the first hour. In patients presenting with an acute aortic dissection, the systolic blood pressure should be rapidly reduced to less than 120 millimeters of mercury. In patients without a compelling indication, the goal is to decrease the systolic blood pressure by no more than 25% in the first hour. Then, if stable after the first hour, we want to reduce the blood pressure to 160 over 100 millimeters of mercury in the next two to six hours. Following that reduction to 160 to 100 millimeters of mercury, we then want to cautiously reduce the blood pressure to normal in the following 24 to 48 hours. The selection of therapy for a patient presenting with a hypertensive emergency depends upon the indication for therapy. So what is the end organ damage that is occurring? We're not going to talk about the selection of therapy for patients presenting with a stroke or intracranial hemorrhage. That is a more complicated discussion and will occur in a future video. In patients with an acute aortic dissection, as mentioned on the previous slide, we want to abruptly lower their blood pressure with the goal of a systolic blood pressure less than 120 millimeters of mercury. In these patients, the goal is to decrease the pulsatile load or aortic stress. This is accomplished with agents that decrease contractility, blood pressure, and venous return. We want to initiate beta blocker therapy first that includes either the use of esmolol or labetalol. And the reason that we want to initiate beta blocker therapy first is that when we initiate other therapies such as nicardipine, nitroprusside, or phenoldipam as our vasodilator, we can get a reflex tachycardia. So once the patient is initiated on esmolol or labetalol, if blood pressure control is still warranted, the addition of alternative therapies can be added. In patients presenting with an acute pulmonary edema or left ventricular failure, the use of a loop diuretic, such as intravenous furosemide, can be administered to a patient, depending on the um, degree of volume overload. Agents such as nitroglycerin or nitroprusside would be used in this, could be used in this situation as well. Agents that can decrease contractility, such as our beta blockers and select calcium channel blockers, should be avoided in patients. In patients presenting with an acute coronary syndrome, the use of nitroglycerin is an option for a patient. Remember to check to ensure that the patient has not recently received a phosphodiesterase inhibitor as the combination of the two can lead to profound reductions in blood pressure. The use of beta blockers such as esmolol or labetalol can, are also an option in this patient case scenario. We would want to avoid the use of esmolol or labetalol in the situation where a patient has evidence of 
heart failure or LV dysfunction, as well as those patients who have bradycardia or second or third degree heart block. In patients presenting with acute kidney injury, we want to select agents that will cause vasodilation without affecting renal clearance or can accumulate in the setting of acute kidney injury. So options include nicardipine, phenoldipam, or clobidipine. Agents such as enalaprilat should not be used in this situation. In patients in pregnant women presenting with eclampsia or preeclampsia, agents such as hydralazine, lobetalol, and nicardipine should be used. The use of an agent such as enalaprilat and nitroprusside should not be used in this situation. The following are some excellent references that delve deeper into the management of hypertensive urgencies and emergencies, and I encourage you to use that for additional reading. Thank you.